Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm back with another one, and uh, this is obviously a popular topic of the internet right now with the release of a certain documentary with uh, Drake Bell. And I speak for a ton of people, I know, when I say I used to love Nickelodeon. I used to love all the shows, as cheesy and corny as a lot of those live-action ones were, all the cartoons. Even if you want to go all the way back to, like, Ren and Stimpy days when cartoons were raunchy as they could ever be. And I I love raunchy humor. But obviously, you know the long-standing show Drake and Josh, the sitcom about two very different brothers... And it's interesting because just a couple years ago, some things about Drake Bell came to light that were really shocking to the audience. That really made the world hate Drake Bell or Drake Parker, if you want to go that way. And obviously, this is all just my opinion. It's uh, nothing's really been quote unquote proven. But then you have Josh Peck, a.k.a. Josh Nichols, you know, uh, the kid, the other kid. And he has definitely um, rushed to the defense of Dan Schneider, the the guy that has a lot of internet documentaries out about him, where he talks, where it's like talking about all the alleged things of Amanda Bynes to Jamie Lynn Spears, a lot of things that are very theoretical, but could never be proven, quote unquote. Meanwhile, just last year, Josh was condoning Drake's quote unquote inappropriate activity And then he goes to back up someone like Dan Schneider, who obviously has a ton of shady dealings and just something that any normal person would be suspicious to speculate on. And then mixed with the controversy of what Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide said in response to it on one of their lives, how apparently they're just having a festival online. They have a podcast now. They have a um, live stream. They got a TikTok and... I'm going to be honest, I'm going to trust my gut and say something does not seem right about those people. Someone had asked a very legitimate question on that live where they asked Ned, hey, were you in on it? And Ned was making some really hardcore jokes. And look, I get his response that sometimes humor is how you deal with things, but you're dealing with it after not speaking about it for years, where you start to wonder, did anyone take any hush money? Did anyone take a payout that can't be proven? What is really going on? And the whole thing just makes the Nickelodeon network reek of a lot of shady stuff. And the even bigger question is Amanda Bynes. We all know the Amanda show, which was a very big hit. Now, honestly, that show was never very funny. It was kind of corny, but I still watched it for entertainment value just because Amanda Bynes had a lot of troubles about her. They came out into light because she just became a very bad shell of an adult and I really hope that she gets the help that she needs and she gets the closure she needs for whatever happened midway between Amanda Bynes and the Amanda show and what she has become today. There's the theories about Jamie Lynn Spears and why she had to go away for Zoe 101 for a while. But everything on this Nickelodeon network has some sort of theory that if you look at it in retrospect kind of holds up even though you can't prove any of them. Also, when you look at starlets who came out of that network like Ariana Grande to how they are very famous now, whether they were playing ball or if any ball was being played, wink. And then you have more reasonable people like Jeanette McCurry who have written some very interesting memoirs about how they're glad that their mother is not with them anymore uh, because they felt like they had their individuality taken from them. And uh, um, Jeanette McCurdy's writings are very interesting because we all look on the outside of people's lives and think that it's all glitz and glam because who wouldn't want to be a Nickelodeon kid? Who wouldn't want to be the star of a Nickelodeon show? Especially as a kid. I mean, if I was a kid at the time and someone asked me if I wanted to be on the show, I would have loved to have been there. But like... I was supposed to be doing TV commercials when I was a toddler, but my mom said no, and I started to understand now why, and if by any chance my mom ever watches this video and is coming across things, I want to thank her now because I didn't really quite understand the decision she had made, Um, but she used to tell me about how I used to be up for TV auditions as a kid who wasn't able to consent to my life decisions yet. 
but she chose to pull me out because she saw a lot of predatory behavior going on behind the sets. Now, can I confirm or deny this own story about my own life? Um, no, but I'm not just saying this so I can seem like I have more stake in this than I do because this is not really my fight. I, like everybody else on the internet, are just a bystander who would really want to know the truth. Because not just with Jeanette McCurdy's situation, but other situations that didn't come out as grounded or as looking very professional, um, if these kids had quote-unquote everything, what did it cost them to quote-unquote have everything? And did they really have everything, or were they held against their will in a really messed up way? Because TV does a really good job of putting filters on things where we always see the characters people are playing. Or even if you go on these quote-unquote reality shows, you see these reality TV episodes that could be staged for all we know. And especially if you go to extreme cases like Amanda Bynes. Everyone's got their sides of the stories, but there's obviously some outcomes where you feel like some people just did not get the healing that they needed and it turned out in a very bad way. And we would all love to be a Nickelodeon kid, but t take a thought about this. You're looking at the younger you who wanted to be that Nickelodeon kid, but you're aware of the shady things that are going on now. How do you tell that younger version of yourself to try and dissuade them from living at that, at that lifestyle, even if they got the offer? I would probably say it's not worth it because just because someone's smiling on a camera doesn't mean that they are a happy person or that their um, wishes are well or their meanings are pure because especially the more money and power and influence people get, that reveals a lot of people. And I know not everybody who has money, power, influence misuses it, but we have seen time and time again that there is a big number of influential celebrity types that will always take advantage of the power and leverage just so they can hold something over someone's head who wants to be famous. And how far is someone willing to go to get that fame? What kind of ball games are they willing to quote unquote play to be a part of those? And I'm going to stop it right there. But that's what I have to say about this Nickelodeon situation. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.